Hello everyone, I hope everybody's having a great summer, and I'm going to start off my summer by doing an old science project that I did this year. So the reason I'm doing this project is because we were doing a chemistry unit. I have been taking an outside of school chemistry class since like 6th or 7th grade. It's two hours every Friday and we get about two hours of work even though our teacher says it should only take you 30 minutes. It's like high school, college level stuff. It's pretty intense. And my teacher knows that I take this class so he let me skip through the chemistry unit we did at my school and he allowed me to do an independent chemistry project. I wasn't the only one in our school taking this class, so other people did this project as well. I'm going to present mine and hopefully you will like it and will learn something from it. The basics of batteries. So what is a battery and how exactly does it work? A battery is a self-contained chemical power pack that can produce a limited amount of electrical energy wherever it's needed. So what does the inside of a battery look like? Confusing, that's what. Before we jump into how all of it works, we need to know some basic vocabulary. Here are five basic vocabulary terms that you need to know to understand a battery. Number one, conductor. A material that allows heat or electricity to pass through it. Electrode. It's one of these two things. It acts as a conductor, specifically in an electrolytic or galvanic cell. A cathode is a positively charged electrode that wants to receive electrons to become more negative or more neutral. An anode is the opposite of this. It pushes its electrons out and gives it to the cathode. Electrolyte, a solution of broken down salts that can help conduct a little bit of electricity. An example of this is table salt in water. Table salt is sodium chloride and it breaks apart into sodium and chlorine ions in water. Now, the penny battery. You guys have all probably been wondering what I've been doing for this past month on the back counter. That, my friends, was the penny battery. The materials I used was water, salt, vinegar, sandpaper, foam board, wire, and a voltage meter. A lot of stuff. Here's a quick montage video to show you how I did it. And while that video is playing, then I just go on and ask for volunteers for my demonstration at the end. I made a video, a handout, which you will see, a demonstration, and a PowerPoint all in one presentation. I did a lot of work. It took a month. Here are my results. As you can see, before the voltage goes up, it takes a dip before it comes back up which is strange because with more pennies there should be more electricity, right? So why is there a dip in voltage? I think that's because of my sanding ability. It was my first time with a power tool, which in my case was a Dremel, but every time I sanded off one side of it, it always slipped off and hit the other edge. As you can see by the pictures, there were a few flaws and I think that short-circuited the battery a little bit. So why is this a battery and how exactly does it work? It's a battery because it has all the same components of a normal battery. Anodes, cathodes, electrolytes, and a positive and negative terminal. The way it works is by the negatively charged electrons flow from the negative terminal, go throughout the thing that needs to be powered, and comes back to the positive terminal. That's why you always have to connect both sides of the battery for something to work or else there's no charge. And if you connect both sides of a battery, it's really bad for the battery because it drains the power right out. Now, let's make that battery. So that presentation that you just saw took about a month. I made that video, I really had some trial and error with that penny battery. That thing would not work. It couldn't even power a light bulb. Uh, my bad. I mean, it still showed electricity, though. 
I mean, the potato battery did better than mine, but still, it's pretty impressive. I mean, money is electricity, right? No, time is money. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of other people made this project, and I've heard a lot of great results from mine, specifically. Um, somebody actually found one of my flyers on the floor, and they used it for their own project as their research, and that was pretty cool. I also heard from my teacher that a student got a connection, like a light bulb turned on, and they related it back to my presentation, which was really cool. And on the flyer it gave instructions on how to make your own, and I've heard from several people that they might make it if, over the summer if they feel like it. My teacher was really fond of my presentation, he said it was the best overall. I'm going to put up the rubric here in a second, but here's a picture of that flyer handout that I made. It had all the information on it, like the vocabulary, directions on how to make your own, and something else I forgot. That took about two hours the day before, so that was pretty cool. I even came out a little bit early to school to pass those out. Put a lot of work into this thing. Now, here is what I got as the grade. So at first glance, it looks really good with all the highlighted yellows, right? They're all in the 10 category. I was really hoping for a 100, but looking at it, I went all the way to the bottom and I saw 48 out of 50. It's a 96 percent. Okay, that's not fair. You guys saw how much work I put into this for a 96. Here, look at the comment. Yeah, best presentation that he's ever seen. So good, great job, 96%. And I know for a fact I was not the highest scorer. People in other classes had 100% and 98s. Yeah, I am salty. Go ahead, say whatever you want, but that was not fair. Like, they started a week before, I mean, some people, yes, some people work hard, like me, but, of course, they got a reward for it. I don't know. I know that I put a 100% of work into this project, and to get a 96, that was not fair. So I asked my teacher, which I won't name because that would be rude, like, why I get the score. And then this guy said... Oh, well, you didn't talk about the future of batteries. It was a really good presentation, but you need more about the future of batteries. And I was stuck with a 96. Best presentation ever, 96. Yeah, I know some of you are going to say, oh, it's a 96, still an A. I know that, but it's not 100%, you know? You know, some, some of you have to know this. I guess the lesson here is, the teacher doesn't grade you, you grade you. I mean, if you put 100% of the work in, and you don't get a high enough grade, or if you don't put any work at all, and you get a really high grade, you have to grade yourself. You have to strive to be the best you, and you can't let a teacher get in the way of that. So, the lesson is pretty simple. You gotta go for 100%. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.
thank you guys for bearing through my little rant. Um, yeah, it's over. Still had an A in the class. It wasn't a 100%, but you know, I'll, I'll, it's an A. So anyway, I'm gonna try to make a video every day this week. I don't know if they're all gonna be posted this week every day or if they're gonna be spaced out. I don't know, but one thing I do know. Here's a little sneak peek. CO2 cartridges, 3D printer, rockets. Stay tuned, guys. I'm going to make it happen. I want to put a parachute, a 3D printed CO2 cartridge rocket. So, stay tuned for that. I also made three other 3D printed projects. So, I usually take projects that I get and turn them into engineering projects. I don't know. So if you guys have a story like this, just post it in the comments. It would make me feel a lot better and it would make the rest of the people feel a lot better. So happy to hear your story. I would definitely like to help if I can help. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.